So Alvin uh, is going to tell us a bit more uh, about the, the policy tools for uh, local authorities. So Alvin is with Wuppertal Institute and he's leading the, the organization leading the Solutions Plus project. Um, and he's been working for over a decade uh, on projects related to sustainable transport in developing countries, uh, uh, climate mitigation and co-benefit analysis for transport initiatives. So he has had the chance uh, in his extensive uh, work experience uh, to work with both the national and the local government. So we're looking forward to this presentation on the policy tools for local authorities. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alvin. And I'll be giving you um, a presentation on um, the e-mobility policy tools for local authorities. I think just to give you a background, when we were co-designing the, the, the training sessions with the, our counterparts, our partners there at the, uh, from, from, from Pasig City. I think this was one of the um, questions that they've had, like what can the local governments do in relation to the, the functions and the powers that are given to them? Siguro po, magtataglish din ako today. I'll try to, to, to concentrate, highlight those uh, tools that, um, probably the, the local governments can explore directly. But uh, I've also included slides on those relevant, uh, let's say, topics, themes, um, that probably the local governments uh, would need to know uh, to better appreciate the, the mechanics. Um, para din po, siguro, um, to, to, to be able to know what you can, um, what you can uh, parang request, no? siguro, when, when talking to different sectors from the national government, and maybe also from, from the private sector. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, so in terms of the outline, I'll be going through four different types of, uh, of uh, policy tools uh, relating to e-mobility. So firstly, regula regulations or uh, legal measures. And the second one is on financial measures. The third one, communications. And the fourth one is more on organizational level. So from the standpoint, for example, of the units themselves, the local government units. Um, so yeah, Kathleen has uh, discussed earlier, so we're uh, representing the Solutions Plus project um, in, in the delivery of these uh, training sessions. Um, this is a global project that is being supported by the uh, European Commission that would run up to 2023, and we're working with uh, 10 different cities globally in terms of um, testing innovations, as well as uh, looking at uh, the supporting mechanisms for accelerating e-mobility. Siguro po, just to put it, everything into context, um, when we talk about e-mobility, we want to put this under the broader context um, of uh, social technical systems. So hindi lang po tayo uh, tumitingin ng e-vehicles on the ground. Um, pero it's really about integrating um, the concept of e-mobility within a wider system na composed of people, technology, infrastructure, processes, we look at goals, we look at culture, and we look at the different aspects of uh, sustainable mobility in general. Um, in relation to the, to the general topic of the session, um, I think that really the priorities um, and the challenges and priorities relating to the current uh, proliferation on no, no, e-vehicles um, safety, ensuring um, also um, increased access for people who would want to increase their uh, mobility, increase access. So in terms um, of the Philippine context, uh, siguro may kita niyo mamaya, marami rin tayong slides on uh, mga light uh, electric vehicles. And then uh, um, Bert Fabian from UNEP would also be focusing on the guidelines uh, for uh, two and three wheelers in South Asia. And Dr. Horizon would probably also uh, uh, go deeper um, into this context for the Malaysian uh, experience. No? So maraming financial advantages yung mga maliliit na electric vehicles natin, mas mura. Um, operational advantages, mas mabilis. Um, for example, it, it compared kung magkocommute ka using the jeepney or kung maglalakad ka. So merong increased access, merong increased mobility, better commuting experience depending sa alternatives natin. Um, in terms of technological advantage, um, these vehicles being electric, um, less urban pollution. 
Um, but uh, in reality, there are challenges uh, due to the lack of clarity. So there are safety concerns, environmental concerns. Ano ba mangyayari sa mga batteries afterwards, for example? Or ano yung standards na ini-ensure um, nung system per se na lahat ng papasok ng mga vehicles would be uh, safe, would be environmentally sustainable. Um, and lahat na ito, pag kina, pag when we do a certain um, um, analysis, no, when we evaluate all these things, do we really benefit, do we really reap the, the, the benefits that these uh, vehicles might offer? So again, I've mentioned uh, earlier, we have uh, legal, regulatory, financial, communication, and organizational um, uh, policy tools that we can use. So let me just go through the regulatory instruments first. So what I'll try to do, um, just tell you stories about um, experiences globally. Uh, we have EU experiences from also from, from North America, a couple from, from Asia. Um, so there are a lot of uh, different uh, regulatory instruments. It could be in terms of uh, legal requirements and standards, be in terms of, uh, you know, relating to, to the charging stations, relating to the, uh, the infrastructure, parking regulations, low emission zones, access to urban areas. I'll be explaining some of these things later. Zoning and building codes, permitting rules and guidelines. So in terms of, uh, let's just go through the basics in terms of regulating the equipment itself, like, like for example, the e-vehicles. Um, um, for example, in the EU, <clears throat> and this particular, let's say, policy uh, regulatory framework that they've um, adopted since 2009. It's based on environmental performance standards and the, the whole vehicle fleet would be moving towards stricter um, environmental standards, for example, CO2 emissions. In terms of the Philippines, um, UNEP, Clean Air Asia, um, the DOE has been working on um, fuel economy standards, for example, for vehicles. And uh, we do hope na we'll progress to as we move forward into the future. Um, there are other things that we can consider in terms of uh, regulation of the equipment. So, for example, in terms of e-scooters, shared e-scooters, po, no? wala pa, I think, sa Philippines tayo. Um, but uh, maybe in, in the near future, we will see some, um, some of these uh, systems. Um, it could be in terms of um, looking at the scooters themselves, looking at identification. Um, looking at uh, um, providing information in terms of the proper operations, parking rules, at fees, paglagay po ng mga accessories, front and rear light requirements, reflector requirements, um, tamper resistance hardware, locking mechanisms, GPS uh, equipment, cable um, equipment, saka compliance standards. Uh, this also might uh, be relevant for, let's say, yung mga shared um, light uh, um, pedal assist or, or power assisted pedal bikes. So, meron ding regulations regarding to the users. Um, sino ba yung gumagamit ng mga sasakyan na to? So, we can see uh, there are different um, you know, rules that are being adopted in terms of age restrictions, in terms of uh, using helmets um, in relation to occupancy. So for example, again, for, for the scooters, only one person per vehicle during operations. Or no using of uh, cell phones while using it um, and or holding of packages, um, also yielding to pedestrians. So, uh, kailangan um, may priority pa rin yung pedestrians no, sa, sa paggamit and adherence to speed limits. Um, ito naman po, combination of equipment, usage, and users. Just an example, this is from the Netherlands. Um, and um, as you can see here, this is for their um, parang ano, um, power assisted bikes. So there are speed limits depending on the type of road that they are operating on. Um, they require um, that, the, that the, the pedelec has a license plate attached to it. So meron ding mga requirements in terms of the user. So again, like at least 16 years old, it has to have a license. Um, wear appropriate helmets, have to have civil liability insurance um, and registration certificate um, every time that they use it. Um, this is particularly important for these types of, uh, of bikes uh, because they are, kumbaga, the, the, the way they are built, they can um, um, move faster and essentially they pose some increased level of uh, safety concerns, for example, uh, for, uh, for example, for, for pedestrians. No? Um, same with Singapore, very similar yung kanilang um, pag-adopt 
uh, ng, ng regulations with regards to power assisted bicycles. So yung kanilang definition, um, the, the bicycles uh, maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour, 200 watts uh, maximum power output. Um, and they require certain requirements for the, for the bikes themselves. And maximum weight should not be, uh, exceed 20 uh, kg. And modifications to the bed, uh, pedal assisted bikes um, are not uh, are prohibited. So they, they have a long list of this. I'm, um, when once you receive the presentation files, we put uh, the sources as well, so you can uh, also explore uh, in detail yung mga pinapakita namin today. Um, and then later, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Bert uh, of UNEP will be uh, going through in detail yung mga guidelines and. Uh, recommendations for, for uh, uh, two and three wheeler guidelines for Southeast Asia. I won't go through this because uh, Bert would be discussing this in detail. So we've gone through, you know, the vehicles, um, equipment, uh, usage. Let's go through some, some regulations um, in relation to um, providing access to these types of vehicles. Um, isa pong tinatawag natin yung low emission zones. Um, one can probably think of this as um, kumbaga, restricting access for certain types of, uh, of uh, vehicles depending on their environmental performance standards. In a way, we do have a certain concept of this in the Philippines, yung mga um, smoke-free zones, for example. I remember dun sa Pasig, city tricycle uh, upgrading ordinance i think 2016 there was a provision there for establishing um smoke free zones and uh, noise uh, free zones but for this one for example um, um what i'm showing here is the one in london uh, so um these are the types of vehicles that are being affected so if if you your vehicle would be as if of a certain age uh, you would be restricted in terms of entering uh, certain parts of the city. And then it, it would require you to register to the system. And if you would, you know, an, um, essentially would actually need to travel, you need to pay a certain amount for being in that zone. And very similarly, this is the one um, that is uh, um, being implemented in Amsterdam. So they've um, had the low emission zones um, but they, um, they are moving towards what they call the zero emission zone. Um, kung makita niyo po dito, they, they um, divided the city into the three dis different zones, the center, um, this uh, inner circle here, and the wider area. And they are adopting different, um, let's say, um, compliance mechanisms for each of the zone, depending on the type of vehicle, depending on the uh, emission standards. Um, and then they also have a progressive timeline leading up to 2030. Um, um, a lot of these systems would, uh, you know, th these are um, just a caveat that uh, they would also need a lot of enabling um, factors. Uh, number one is uh, technology. Um, um, a lot of the systems, for example, this one and the one in UK, I think um, they are using um, parang, uh, camera monitoring um, um, devices for, for tracking, you know, for, for looking in, into um, um, the, the vehicles that are are, are moving or entering the zones. Um, another one is really focusing on the social aspects, yung social acceptability um, of uh, these types of, um, uh, let's say, uh, regulations. And also one thing to consider also is the, 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 the impacts in terms of the overall uh, system, transport system, because if, if um, Vehicles are not being allowed in a certain area. Kailangan merong alternatives kasi. It's not just about restricting vehicles in one zone without taking into consideration the whole network. Um, it might actually lead to more um, you know, people diverting to other places na magkakaroon pa ng um, more congestion if the, the, the system is not properly planned for. Um, so yeah, I'm just giving the... Um, the details here, but you can check it out later. Uh, so a very similar situation in uh, South Korea. Um, <clears throat> so they, they've <clears throat> adopted a wider vision in terms of uh, reducing greenhouse gases in, the, in terms of uh, 
um, having a wider, um, longer term transport vision. And this is where they, uh, or, or this is what they use as a basis for putting up the, what they call the green transportation zone. Um, so they target um, all light duty vehicles that are pre-2002. Um, the mechanics is that it works uh, from 6 to 9 uh, a.m., uh, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., and they monitor through different access points throughout the city. Uh, same principle, you have to pay a certain fine if you, um, you know, cross the, the zone um, based on the time here. Um, but they also provided financial support for those um, you know, um, kung yung gustong mag-upgrade ng vehicles, for example, um, just uh, again as as an example po. <clears throat> um, yeah, I won't. I I'll skip some of the slides because I think I just have fifteen or sixteen minutes left. Um, but anyway, so um, we've seen um, the vehicles, the usage, uh, access regulations. Um, and again, like a combination of different operational measures, this is the experience uh, or, or what they're trying to do in, in Shenzhen, China, just to give you an idea of the preferential, let's say, um, measures that are gearing towards uh, um, um, electric vehicles. This is more on the logistic side of things, but um, in terms of, um, you know, um, providing access in terms of daytime entry, exemption from odd even schemes, um, registration um, in in the city as well as uh, in the in the different zones. So as compared to the other types of vehicles, um, let's go now to some examples for for parking. Um, in terms of uh, parking, po. So well, I think in in Pasig, wala pa naman ties kung mga dedicated uh, parking lots and with um, um, EV enabled uh, or EV enabled parking lots, no, uh, or charging enabled parking lots. But maybe in the future, it might be useful to think about um, how these are going to be used. Whether um, these can be used um, only by electric vehicles while they are charging the vehicle, um, or if they can be used by electric vehicles regardless of whether they are charging or not. So, kung pwede ba sila magpark doon kahit tapos na sila magcharge or parking for non-EVs on the um, EV-enabled parking lot is allowed in certain situations. So kung walang gumagamit or during certain times of the day, during um, kung libre siya, or baka pwedeng may maximum number of minutes or hours that the non-EVs can park there. Or it could be in terms of uh, differential parking rates that are going to be um, allowed, no? So pwedeng free parking plus magbabayad ng electricity, electricity fee yung uh, magpapark at magcharge doon. Or it could be in terms of regular parking rates or progressive parking rates. So for example, um, aside from the um, electricity and the cost of electricity that's being consumed, the parking rates uh, can increase during the duration of the parking uh, session. Or it could be a combination. So again, this is um, you know thinking about the future once we have these uh, types of... Uh, of uh, parking uh, facilities. So in terms of Amsterdam, they've um, used a combination of this and they are moving towards uh, progressive parking. Um, one of the key features that they did um, to, to stimulate the adoption of EVs was in the, in the, in the start you known as to provide free parking. Um, just a, a note on this, um, it cannot be like, cannot be forever. Uh, we cannot uh, incentivize uh, parking uh, per se. Um, as it is, uh, and give it free. So this is, um, um, you know, uh, urban concern in, in general. So aside from parking, we, we there are certain uh, provisions for providing uh, incentives for e-vehicle users um, in terms of using specific uh, uh, lanes, for example, but these have to be integrated into broader goals and um, have, must be backed up by national policies. Um, and I think this is also important to consider. Um, this is something that uh, we would be tackling tomorrow um, in more technical detail because we have the experts there. Um, but in terms of, uh, for example, in in uh, in the U.S., there have been some um, you know um, poly uh, approaches that are being um, done at the local level. Um, that in terms of ensuring the preparedness for the integration of hardware through the building code like regulation in terms of pre-facilitating, for example, um, mandating the installation of empty tubes for future cables, passive infrastructure, pre-wiring, and you know, um, 
facilitating active infrastructure yung talagang maglagay na or mag mag require na for each um, facility or housing etc merong specific lots or space that would be dedicated for um, such parking um, charging facilities so yeah and for example this one mandated new homes to be pre-wired moving towards charging and parking requirements uh, for hotels apartments commercial buildings and um, for example, um, Seattle has adopted a version of the electrical code um, that added, added notable changes that included certain language that is uh, facilitative of uh, EV charging facilities. So you know, in terms of language, um, they are, uh, these are just a couple of examples um, in terms of how they are doing it um, just to facilitate the, the, the shift towards, uh, uh, let's say, EV inclusive uh, types of uh, buildings. And I'll go through the financial instruments uh, quite quickly. Again, maramita in different types of uh, financial incentives, financial uh, mechanisms. Um, the one that I would highlight here, um, yeah, so we do know about uh, a lot of these uh, purchase subsidies, which might not be too relevant uh, in the case of local governments in uh, Pasig, lalo na yung sa, you know, pagbili ng mga EVs, pagbili ng private EVs, for example. But um, there are a lot of these uh, types of different mechanisms that are being uh, implemented globally, as well as, uh, for example, these ones are from the EU. I just wanted to highlight this one. No? So, um, marami rin po ngayon uh, na nangyayari in terms of um, local governments subsidizing, uh, for example, e-cargo bikes. Um, siguro this is something that might be possible to do um, in, in some sort of fashion in the, in the cities in the Philippines. Number one, because the costs are um, hindi naman siya katulad ng uh, pagbili ng uh, electric car, for example. Um, so there are different mechanisms that are being um, uh, tested. So in terms of uh, providing direct financing, in terms of uh, looking into um, providing certain portions of uh, or certain amounts for 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 purchasing of e e bikes and e cargo bikes and for leasing leasing schemes po, no? so um, so if for example this one is a good example leasing schemes for young families for trying out cargo cycles before buying so um, just to provide that uh, certain picture that uh, a lot of these things are also possible. I, I won't go through the details. You can uh, check uh, these slides later on, but there are different uh, incentives in terms of um, giving competitive advantage to EV owners in terms of registration fees, in terms of uh, the fees that are associated with the ownership of the vehicles per se, in terms of the, the different uh, um, um, reduction in, in, in income, corporate taxes, if you are using um, electric vehicles, um, and also if you are putting up charging facilities, um, maybe again for, for the charging facilities tomorrow we would discuss this more in detail. Um, there are other types of uh, financing uh, um, incentives that are happening uh, more, for example, on the research uh, part of uh, uh, or the, on the research side, maybe again something that you might think of uh, asking or um, <laughs> uh, um, providing ideas to the national governments in terms of, um, you know, facilitating some research, uh, city level, urban level research uh, initiatives um, on the ground to, to be able to um, to support e-mobility. Communication instruments very quickly. Um, again, it's really about sensitizing the, the public um, in terms of um, the, the advantages of e-mobility and uh, siguro debunking some of the, um, let's say, myths. No? Uh, very important um, in terms of uh, having that wider support. Uh, there are a lot of different mechanisms, um, you know, different schemes, um, more on the national level, fuel economy, CO2 la uh, labeling schemes. There are different uh, types of social campaigns and the use of um, information, especially for, I think for the Philippines, very important to be cognizant of the fact that uh, the, the, the role of social media is playing um, um, in, in, yeah, in, in our lives. No? So uh, provi providing information, providing messages uh, that would be supportive of e-mobility and uh, also doing a lot of uh, different uh, types of on-the-ground activities, maybe not now during the pandemic, but later on 
um, um, let's uh, um, keep the ball rolling in terms of these types of activities. Signages are uh, later um, probably something that uh, can be discussed um, um, in the uh, um, city level discussions. So now these are going to be um, tackled, uh, but it has to be clear, it has to have um, you know com communicable and commands uh, certain respect from, from the users. Organizational level, um, different types of um, mechanisms that probably the, the local governments can um, uh, look into, uh, especially in the, in the uh, immediate term. So the first one is uh, electrifying your own fleets. So the first, um, you know, if, if you would be adopting more and more or, or, you know, testing out these types of vehicles, I think this is what we're also trying to do in the demonstration uh, project with PASIG. They are going to be using uh, some of the uh, shared vehicles, shared electric vehicles for their own operations for the, uh, the transport of, uh, of medical equipment and uh, transportation of employees. So para po makita ng uh, ating mga constituents yung benefits at kung paano ito gumagana, it's very important. So one of the, I think, the first things that uh, local governments in the Philippines can do. Try it out and uh, maybe look forward towards uh, procuring or, or utilizing more of these types of vehicles in the future. Um, in terms of um, procurement, no? so aside from um, electrifying the own fleets, it, uh, the local governments can also look into um, pushing suppliers, contractors to actively look into using more EVs. Um, um, also, maybe in terms of imposing certain requirements um, that are related to the provision of such services. Again, these are uh, possibilities. <laughs> um, um, that uh, we can look into towards into the future. Just wanted to share this uh, interesting slide from this project by set. So what they did was to coordinate with the uh, different cities um, in Europe. I think they were working initially with five cities um, and they wanted to uh, influence or put up um, procurement guidelines for the purchases of innovation. So particularly in terms of electrified automated uh, transportation services. What they did was to, to, to map out the footprint of lahat ng procurement na ginagawa nila, prioritize nila yung sectors, and then they talked to the market and they prepared um, innovative procurement plans. Um, in terms of the types of uh, innovations that they incorporated into the procurement processes, so they um, you know, looked into the award criteria, looking at minimum specifications that are geared towards cleaner services, preference for non-motorized transportation. Um, um, so for example, in terms of uh, um, providing uh, um, utility services ng paglinis ganyan so there are certain mechanics ng paggamit ng cargo bikes etc or they they, also, they can also require sustainable fleet certification um, requiring transportation data monitoring in, for the contractors increasing of contract length so lahat ng mga magpapasok ng mas um, sustainable services um, they would be geared towards uh, doing so kasi mas matagal yung kontrata um, and uh, some other things, so like providing for on-site uh, infrastructure, etc., and providing guidance to the companies. <clears throat> I'll, I'll skip some of the slides because I have four minutes, but um, the other organizational tools, I think this is also um, being looked at in PASIG in terms of uh, looking into your own facilities. I think the parking lot, um, the big parking lot in PASIG, they're trying to um, integrate uh, EV charging facilities and also dun sa, sa shared vehicle scheme, tinitingnan yung potential pag-integrate ng mga charging facilities dun sa government-controlled uh, uh, health facilities. So a lot to, to think about moving towards into the future, integrating e-mobility, um, starting off with your own uh, facilities. Facilitating permitting for charging facilities. Again, maybe in, in looking forward into the future, there, these are some of the... Uh, the examples, no? um, pag, for example, uh, uh, these are from the US again. Um, so if you are putting up a certain um, 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 EV charging equipment uh, facility, we need to go through the permitting process. And um, these are certain um, me um, measures na para mapagaan yung proseso for, for applying for such uh, uh, permits. Um, and certain incentives like waiving of inspection fees, same day permitting, 
um, yeah, and then providing uh, as well mga opportunities for engaging and for, for learning for, for the different uh, uh, potential uh, uptakers ng ganitong classing facilities, especially if you're integrating such into existing facilities or you're putting up a new one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll skip this slide, but just for siguro for, for um, taking into account na marami din pong mga emerging business models that are happening and maybe in the future, a lot of these things uh, need to be considered also at the local level in terms of processes, ayan, mga ganyan, permitting, uh, in terms of providing maybe incentives as well for these types of, um, of uh, business models within the value chain. Um, again, very important po na uh, integrated into the wider plans, I think, uh, um, in, the, in the process of uh, doing the, let's say, um, the, the urban mobility plans or yung sa atin, yung local transport uh, route planning, no? siguro kailangan, I think, uh, may mga elements done in terms of uh, looking into green routes, etc. But it has to be um, siguro wider integration in the wider land use uh, plans and urban mobility plans na ginagawa natin. It's very important. And maybe, maybe just to, to food for thought in terms of uh, prioritizing complementing uh, public transportation and maybe looking into um, making a dent in terms of private vehicle mentality and um, utilizing e-mobility, um, prioritizing them in terms of feeding into the, the, the public transport systems and to uh, improve the uh, first and last mile um, um, legs of the trips and through maybe shared EV systems. Uh, pinag-isipa po na konti yung sa case ng Philippines, case ng Pasig. Uh, these are just some potential ideas um, in terms of, uh, you know, what uh, might be some um, um, uh, regulations, for example. Um, key priorities in terms of uh, operations regulations. So maybe in the context of local governments, meron naman tayong uh, certain mandates in terms of um, ensuring safety sa local roads, for example, kung paano gamitin, pwedeng gamitin yung mga EVs there. Um, future iteration, at least for PASIG, um, I think pinag-uusapan na rin nila na um, include yung electric tricycles um, in the next iteration of the tricycle upgrading ordinance. Maybe it's something that can be considered. Um, local building codes guidance on EV-ready infrastructure. Again, moving towards into the future, how would this be um, integrated in in, um, in the whole planning process. Sorry. My timer is sorry. Okay, uh, I'll just wrap up. Huh? Financials incentives to developers. So maybe um, in looking into the revenue code, there were certain incentives there, for example, for um, um, sustainable mobility, but uh, maybe um, pwede rin siguro i-consider somehow in the future um, paano yung mga, mga development that would um, uh, support e-mobility. So maybe that's something that can be discussed. Um, potentially consider specific percentage um, of the EST fund for e-mobility in the case of PASIC to um, be uh, siguro ring-fenced or, or allocated for certain uh, um, e-mobility supportive infrastructure or activities. Organizational permitting incentives, um, again, across the different value chains, if you're providing or, or going through the business permitting, um, uh, building permits, etc. Exploring appropriate procurement approaches um, yeah, for the different services, equipment that are being uh, um, um, procured by the city. Communications, it's uh, yeah, inclusion of sensitization or to inability is a key pillar in communication strategies and activities and potentially moving forward yung mga different events natin to you know, um, highlight the uh, immobility in our multimedia presence. So just to wrap up, uh, yeah, I have two minutes. Um, so we've seen uh, that there are various local level policy measures um, that we can use or we can explore in terms of uh, supporting accelerating e-mobility that have been made available uh, through global experiences. Although um, just a caveat again, it's uh, about uh, taking these concepts and um, putting them into the local situations. Malaking, um, malaking uh, bagay po kasi yung, yung contextualization um, to be able to make these uh, concepts work. Um, we may not need to start from scratch um, based on prior experience. Um, there's also a lot of uh, 
benefits in terms of learnings from other cities is also what we're trying to do in Solutions Plus. Um, we have mga different cities in terms of the common challenges, common um, and potential ways forward na ginawa din, um, in, in the other cities that are more relatable So mga from, from the developing countries. Um, so yeah, not a straightforward contextualization is quite important, leading towards um, integrating these into wider social technical systems. Um, we would want to look into combination of different uh, policy measures. So not one bullet would be enough, I suppose. Um, and uh, just considering the, the limitations, the challenges, um, we can combine some of the measures to, to be able to maximize the, the benefits as well as ensure the integration of e-mobility into wider uh, frameworks and goals. So with that, I, uh, I think, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your patience. I hope I did not bore everyone with the presentation. Thank you, Alvin. You did not at all. <laughs> so there are a lot of in instruments now that we saw that we can consider indeed. Um, I think it will be a good exercise actually when you presented the last few summary, Alvin, now that after this session, one follow up that I can already think of is revisiting this list and the image that you have presented and, and see what are the different instruments uh, that can be taken up by PASIC team and also the, the steering committee. So, you know, based on the targets that will be set on, let's say, EVs uh, by PASIC, because PASIC is also going to be developing the, the e mobility roadmap, by the way, uh, what are the different strategies that the city can take? Uh, what are the opportunities that can be had at city level? Uh, later on, we'll touch a bit more about the, the regulatory and the alignment of the national and local government. Uh, I believe we'll have the, uh, Siddharth from, from ET. His presentation is going to be about that. Uh, one example is like integration of the hardware through uh, building code uh, legislation. They also have some examples of this from India. Uh, financial instrument, the second one, uh, what are the different uh, governance and, and uh, instruments that can be done at city level maybe there are incentives and disincentives that can be provided so uh, on the communication front um a lot of public events uh, already done by the city so we have seen some of that if you are following uh if some of you are following the passing transport a facebook page you would see that they're also um enhancing the communication strategy no? so we'll also touch on this on friday uh, because we'll have a chance to determine and see how they can be targeted to, let's say, now e trikes uh, the enterprises, uh, and, and, and shared mobility device users. Now. So, uh, and really impressed that even within passive transport, I believe they have a communication person uh, focused on that. So, thank you so much for that overview, Alvin. 